Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 25 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you in some detail the concept of continuous probability distributions. And towards the end of the lecture, we were discussing one particular example. Let us pick up the same example and understand how we will compute any conditional probability in the case of a continuous probability distribution. As you now see on the screen, the example that we were considering was find the value of k so that the function f of x defined as follows may be a density function. f of x is equal to k x in the range 0 to 2 and it is equal to 0 elsewhere. Compute the probability that x is equal to 1 as well as the probability that x is greater than 1. Also compute the distribution function f of x. Students, aapko yaad hoga ke ye tamam uh, questions humne last time solve kar liye the, but there was one more question and as you see on the screen, we wanted to compute the probability that x is less than half given the information that x does lie somewhere between 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. So, ab sawal ye paida hota hai ke is problem ko hum kis tara se tackle karenge. We will apply the same definition that we did when we dealt with this concept in the very beginning. As you will recall, the probability that B occurs given that A has already occurred is equal to the probability that both A and B occur divided by the probability that A occurs. So, this problem may subse pele hum ye dekhenge ke wo kaun si situation banegi ke jis mein hum keh sake ke A or B dono baate occur kar rahi hai. As you see on the screen, is me b jo hai that is x less than or equal to half or a jo hai that is that x is lying between 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. Students, ye dono baate bayak vakt uh, kis tara se ho sakti hai? If you consider the range x lying between 1 by 3 and half, you will realize that both these requirements are being fulfilled. Agar x 1 by 3 or half ke darmiyan lai karta hai, jaisa ke aap numerator jo aap ke saamne hai us mein dekh rahe hai, to aap ye realize karenge ke x is less than half and x is somewhere between 1 by 3 and 2 by 3 if it is falling in the range 1 by 3 to half, both of those events are occurring. Yani dusre lavzo me un dono events ki jo intersection hai, that is represented by this range. Now, the denominator has to be the probability of A and as I said a few minutes ago, in this problem, slash ke baad jo cheez hai that is a and that is that x lies between 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. So, we divide probability that x lies between 1 by 3 and half by the probability that x lies between 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. In other words, we divide the integral of x by 2 from 1 by 3 to half by the integral of x by 2 from 1 by 3 to 2 by 3. Aapko yaad hai na, k is problem mein, we had found that k was equal to half and hence our probability density function was f of x is equal to x by 2. Now, computing the integrals, we obtain x square over 4 within the limits 1 by 3 to half divided by x square by 4 within the limits 1 by 3 to 2 
2 by 3 and computing this quantity our final result is 5 by 12. Students this is the way we can compute any conditional probability in the case of a continuous probability distribution. Yani ye probability 5 by 12 jo is case mein aai ye us situation mein ki jab ye information hume hasil hai ki humara x jo hai that is occurring in the range 1 by 3 to 2 by 3. Aye ab hum ek aur example karte hai which uh, may appear to be a slightly more complicated situation. As you now see on the screen, if we have the statement that a continuous random variable x has the distribution function capital L f of x as follows, capital F of x is equal to 0 for the range x is less than 0, capital F of x is equal to 2x square over 5 for the range 0 to 1 and for the range 1 to 2 it is a much more complicated expression minus 3 over 5 plus 2 over 5 multiplied by 3x minus x square over 2. Also capital F of x is equal to 1 for the range x is greater than 2. Given this entire information we are required to find the probability density function of this continuous random variable and the probability that the absolute value of x is less than 1.5. Students, up to aap kahenge ke bas bahut hi zyada sakht problem ho gai because now we do not have available to us small f of x jiska hum integral le lete rather we have capital F of x. How do we proceed to solve this question? Aapko yaad hai na, many last time aapko ek bada important rule diya tha that the relationship between the small f of x and the capital F of x is that the derivative of capital F of x is equal to small f of x. Of course, this uh, tallies with what you study in pure mathematics and now if we apply this in this problem we will be in a position to solve the question. As you now see on the screen small f of x will be the derivative of capital F of x and for the range x lying between 0 and 1 this derivative comes out to be 4x over 5. For the range 1 to 2 this derivative comes out to be 2 over 5 multiplied by 3 minus x and for the range x less than 0 or x greater than 2 small f of x comes out to be 0 and students I would like to advise you to compute all these derivatives on your own. Jaisa ki aap sab jante hain, it is the general perception that it is much easier to find the derivatives as compared with the integrals and I am sure that you should be able to compute all these derivatives conveniently. Achha, iske baad next hum kya cheez compute karna chahte hain? The probability that the absolute value of x is less than 1.5. Students, इस सिलसिले में सबसे अहम बात समझने की ये है कि if we are saying that the absolute value of x is less than 1.5, it means that x itself lies anywhere between minus 1.5 and 1.5. देखिए first कीजिए कि x is equal to minus 1.3. उसका absolute value उसकी आप जब लेंगे, what will you get? 1.3 and that is less than 1.5. So, in order to compute this particular probability, as you now see on the screen, it is equal to the probability that x lies between minus 1.5 and 
and this means that we have to find the integral of our probability density function from minus 1.5 to 1.5, but since our probability density function has different forms in different regions of the x axis. Therefore, we have to split the integral into different parts and then we are able to solve this problem. So, the probability that modulus of x is less than 1.5 is equal to the integral from minus 1.5 to 0 of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 4 x over 5 plus the integral from 1 to 1.5 of 2 times 3 minus x over 5. Solving this integral our answer is 0 0.75. In other words, it is 75 percent probability that for this particular density function our random variable x lies somewhere between minus 1.5 and 1.5. Students, you aapko yaad hoga ke pichli martaba humne detail mein mathematical expectation ka concept discuss kiya. Now, of course, the concept of mathematical expectation mean, variance, moments and moment ratios, it holds equally for the continuous probability distributions. The only difference is that in the earlier situation, we were finding various sums and in this situation, the summation sign is replaced by the integration sign. Let me explain this to you with the help of the following example. Find the expected value of the random variable x having the PDF f of x is equal to 2 times 1 minus x in the range 0 to 1 and it is equal to 0 elsewhere. In order to solve this question, we compute the expected value of x which is given by the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x multiplied by f of x. Students, ye humne expression jo istemal kiya hai, integral of x into f of x, I hope you realize that this is nothing new actually. It is very, very similar to the formula that we had for expected value of x in the case of a discrete random variable. Yaad hai na? In that situation, we had e of x is equal to sigma x into f of x, where f of x, of course, represented the probability. So, as I said earlier, now when we are dealing continuous random variables, rather than having sigma, yani summation, we will have integration. And so, as you now see on the slide again, expected value of x is the integral of x into f of x and in this problem it is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 x into 1 minus x and that is equal to 2 times x square over 2 minus x cubed over 3 and the limits are 0 to 1 and solving this expression the final result is 1 over 3. आपने देखा कि मैंने इंटीग्रल कंप्यूट किया फ्रॉम 0 टू 2 फिर आप कहेंगे कि वो जो माइनस इंफिनिटी से 0 या 2 से इंफिनिटी वाला था वो किधर गया जाहिर है कि अगर मैं वो कंप्यूट करूंगी दोस विल बी इक्वल टू 0 सो आई एक्चुअली डोंट नीड टू राइट इट एवरी टाइम 0 तो लिखने की हर مرتبہ जरूरत नहीं होगी नाउ एज यू जस्ट नोटिसड द आंसर द मीन द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू in this particular problem has come out to be 1 over 3 which is equal to 0 0.3333. So, 
Let us try to visualize this situation and if we draw the graph of this particular probability distribution, we have the picture that you now see on the screen. As you can see, this one is again a straight line, but because of the negative sign that we had in the equation of f of x, this is a downward going line because the slope is negative and the total area under the curve is equal to 1 because of the fact as stated before that for any probability distribution the total area under the curve is always 1. As far as the mean is concerned as I said it is 0 0.33 and so if we want to represent it graphically you can see that it occurs a little before the number 0 0.5 and as such it is not in the exact middle of the distribution but it is obvious that you can get the mean in the exact center of the distribution only if it is an absolutely symmetric distribution. So, if we have a problem in which we get a triangular distribution which is absolutely symmetric then of course our mean will be in the exact center of the distribution. Also if we have the uniform distribution, the uniform distribution being the one for which we have a horizontal line and that is why we say uniform students that is also absolutely symmetric. Agar aap uske darmiyan mein aina khada kare, the left hand side will be the mirror image of the right hand side and so in this case too your mean will be in the exact center of the distribution. And then of course we have the normal distribution, the beautiful bell shaped distribution that I have already talked about but about which I will talk in much more detail in a coming lecture and in the case of the absolutely symmetric normal distribution again the expected value of x that is the mean will lie in the exact center of the distribution. Aapko yaad hoga ke pichle lecture mein I discussed with you two properties of mathematical expectation the expected value of a constant is equal to the constant and the other one was expected value of ax plus b is equal to a times the expected value of x plus b. Aye, is property ko hum is situation mein verify karne ki, ko ki koshish karte hain and uh, you will realize that because we are dealing with a continuous situation this time all these expected values will have to be computed by the use of integration. So as you now see on the screen, suppose that a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 5, then we wish to verify that expected value of 3x plus 5 is equal to 3 times expected value of x plus 5. Now the right hand side of the equation is very simple to find because we have already found that the expected value of x for this particular problem is 1 over 3 and therefore 3 times e of x plus 5 comes out to be equal to 1 plus 5 and that is 6. In order to compute the left hand side of this equation we have to proceed as follows expected value of 3x plus 5 is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 3x plus 5 multiplied by 2 times 1 minus x and this is equal to 2 times integral from 0 to 1 of 5 minus 2x minus 3x square. Solving this integral students you find that expected value of 3x plus 5 is equal to 6 
exactly the same result that you had for the right hand side. I would like to draw your attention now to a special case of this particular property. As you now see on the screen, if we put b equal to 0, then our equation e of ax plus b is equal to a times e of x plus b takes the very simple form that expected value of ax is equal to a times expected value of x. This means that when you have a 2x or 4x or this kind of thing you have and you have to expected value, then the 2 or 4 is in that expression that will come out and it will simply become 2 times e of x. So, this is a very simple rule and a very convenient formula to remember. Expected value ka basic concept or formula in the case of continuous distributions, ye to aapne samaj liya. Iske baad, of course, we are interested in computing the moments and the moment ratios of any continuous probability distribution. Isliye ke hamara jo bunyadi maqsad hai, wo to abhi wohi hai na? that we are interested in finding the central tendency, the spread and the shape of our distribution. So, let us compute the moments and the moment ratios uh, for the example that you now see on the screen. A continuous random variable x has the PDF f of x is equal to 3 over 4 times x into 2 minus x in the range 0 to 2 and it is equal to 0 otherwise. Find the first four moments about the mean and the moment ratios. In order to solve this question students, we have two options. One is that we have the formula that directly apply kare moment about the mean will be given by expected value of x minus mu whole raised to r yani rth moment ke liye uski power r hogi but you will realize that in this situation we have to compute integrals and it is possible that if we use this formula our integral becomes a very complicated expression. So, we have the other alternative that I will initially find the first four moments about 0 that is expected value of x minus 0 raised to r in other words expected value of x raised to r that is not perhaps as difficult as the one I mentioned earlier or jab hum ye moments nikal lenge uske baad wohi relationships jo aapke saas ki thi if we apply them we will find the moments about the mean. So, as you now see on the screen the first moment about 0 is denoted by mu 1 dash and it is expected value of x minus 0 whole raised to 1 which is exactly the same thing as expected value of x and applying the same formula as before our answer comes out to be 1. The second moment about 0 is expected value of x square and this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of x square multiplied by f of x and solving this expression the answer is 6 over 5. Then the third moment about 0 is mu 3 dash equal to expected value of x cubed and that comes out to be 8 over 5. In a similar way the fourth moment is found to be 16 divided by 7. 
स्टूडेंट्स अब हम वो रिलेशनशिप सप्लाई करेंगे जो हमने इससे पहले उस वक्त डिस्कस किए थे व्हेन वी वर डीलिंग विद फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आपको याद है कि वहाँ पे मोमेंट्स वर बीइंग डिनोटेड बाय एम एम वन एम टू एम वन डैश वगैरह लेकिन यहाँ पे ऑफ कोर्स वी आर यूजिंग म्यू वन म्यू टू एक्सेट्रा एंड हेंस एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द रिलेशनशिप्स कनेक्टिंग द मोमेंट्स अबाउट द मीन विद द मोमेंट्स अबाउट जीरो आर म्यू वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो विच इज ऑलवेज ट्रू रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वट एवर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वी आर डीलिंग विद म्यू टू इज इक्वल टू म्यू टू डैश माइनस म्यू वन डैश होल स्क्वेयर एंड अप्लाइंग दिस फॉर्मूला इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम म्यू टू कम्स आउट टू बी वन ओवर फाइव म्यू थ्री इज इक्वल टू म्यू थ्री डैश माइनस थ्री टाइम्स म्यू वन डैश इन टू म्यू टू डैश प्लस टू टाइम्स म्यू वन डैश क्यूब एंड सब्सटीट्यूटिंग ऑल द वैल्यूज ऑफ म्यू वन डैश म्यू टू डैश एंड म्यू थ्री डैश द थर्ड मोमेंट अबाउट द मीन म्यू थ्री कम्स आउट टू बी जीरो फाइनली म्यू फोर इज गिवन बाय अ लेंथियर एक्सप्रेशन similar to the one that we did earlier and applying this formula mu4 the fourth moment about the mean comes out to be 3 divided by 35 students ye jo results abhi humne hasil kiye hain um inki interpretation pe zara gaur kijiye humne dekha ke mu2 is equal to 1 over 5 aur aapko yaad hai na के सेकेंड मोमेंट अबाउट द मीन इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम थिंग एज द वेरियंस इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट देन ऑफकोर्स यू कैन फाइंड द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बाई टेकिंग द स्क्वेयर रूट ऑफ वन ओवर फाइव एंड दैट इज वेरी कन्वीनियंट एंड एज सून एज यू फाउंड द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन ऑफकोर्स यू आर ऑल्सो इन अ पोजिशन to compute the coefficient of variation which as you remember is given by the formula sigma over mu into 100 and which gives us the dispersion of our distribution relative to the mean of the distribution and the answer is in percentage form so that we can compare the variability of this particular distribution with the variability of any other similar distribution iske baad zara mu3 pe gaur kijiye mu3 ki ka jo answer aaya hai that is zero and do you not remember that that we have discussed in a lot of detail that for an absolutely symmetric distribution the third moment about the mean is zero iska matlab ye hua ki ye jo distribution hai इट इज एब्सोलूटली सिमेट्रिक तो आपके जहन में तो फिर अब शायद कुछ कन्फ्यूजन पैदा हो गई होगी कि हमने इसका ग्राफ तो ड्रॉ भी नहीं किया एंड जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस थर्ड मोमेंट वी आर मेकिंग सच अ बिग स्टेटमेंट दैट दिस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज एब्सोलूटली सिमेट्रिक स्टूडेंट्स वाई डोंट यू ड्रॉ द ग्राफ ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इट इज एक्सट्रीमली सिंपल आपका जो आपकी जो इक्वेजन है एफ ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू समथिंग आप उसके अंदर x की वो जो मुख्तलिफ पॉसिबल वैल्यूज हैं उनमें से कुछ वैल्यूज उसके अंदर रखिए एंड कंप्यूट f ऑफ x एंड देन ड्रॉ सिंपल ग्राफ ऑफ f ऑफ x अगेंस्ट x एंड फाइंड आउट फॉर योर सेल्फ इज द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एक्चुअली सिमेट्रिक और नॉट नाउ द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस इज द टू मोमेंट रेशोज that also we have discussed when we were talking about frequency distributions as you will recall in that situation we used to say that b1 and b2 are the two moment ratios that give us indication regarding the skewness and the kurtosis of the distribution lekin jaisa ki last lecture mein bhi aapne note kiya hoga 
In the case of a probability distribution, these moment ratios are denoted by a beta 1 and beta 2. And as you now see on the screen, for this particular problem, beta 1 which is mu 3 square over mu 2 cubed is equal to 0 square over 1 over 5 cubed and obviously that is equal to 0. As far as beta 2 is concerned, it is given by mu 4 over mu 2 square and when we substitute the values, our beta 2 comes out to be 2.14. Aapko yaad hoga ke humne kaha tha ke for a normal distribution, the value of the second moment ratio is equal to 3 and for a leptocratic distribution, it is greater than 3 and for a platycratic distribution, it is less than 3. So, the answer that we have just obtained, students, I leave it to you to interpret the shape of this particular probability distribution with regard to the peakedness of the distribution. All right, now that we have discussed in quite some detail the concept of the univariate discrete probability distribution and the univariate continuous probability distribution, students, it's time for me to begin with you the discussion of bivariate probability distributions. Yani, ab hum us situation ke saath deal karne wale hain, jis mein hum sirf ek variable x mein interested nahi hain, balke we are interested in two variables simultaneously, x and y. Aap kahenge ke ek variable ki discussion hi kya kam thi ke ab hum do variables ki baat kare. Is pe mujhe ek khubsurat shair yaad aagya. Shair ne kaha hai, ibtadai ishq hai, rota hai kya, aage aage dekhiye, hota hai kya. Students, ilm to ek la mutanahi samandar hai. Aur nai aur aap saari umr bhi lage rahe hai. तो उस समंदर का एक कतरा ही हासिल कर सकते हैं। But it's worth it. So, for the discussion of the bivariate probability distribution, let us begin with the concept of joint distributions. As you now see on the screen, the distribution of two or more random variables which are observed simultaneously when an experiment is performed is called their joint distribution. As indicated earlier, it is customary to call the distribution of a single random variable as univariate. Likewise, a distribution involving two, three or many random variables simultaneously is referred to as bivariate, trivariate or multivariate distribution. So, let us begin the discussion of the bivariate probability function in the discrete situation. As you now see on the screen, if we let x and y be two discrete random variables defined on the same sample space S, x taking the values x1, x2, so on up to xm and y taking the values y1, y2, so on up to yn, then the probability that x takes on the value xi and at the same time y takes on the value yj is denoted by f of xi comma yj and this is defined to be the joint probability function or simply the joint distribution of x and y. Thus, the joint probability function also called the bivariate 
probability function f of x y is a function whose value at the point x i y j is given by f of x i y j is the probability that the random variable x takes the value x i and the random variable y takes the value y j and this equation is valid for all the i values from 1 to m and all the j values from 1 to n. This joint probability distribution is very conveniently represented in the form of the table that you now see on the screen. This time we have a bivariate situation and we can write the x values in the first column as you can see and we can write the y values on the top so that inside the body of the table we have all the probabilities of the form f of x i comma y j. The point to be understood is that the sum of all these joint probabilities is equal to 1 and this is exactly how we would want it to be because we have been studying for quite some time now that for any random experiment the probability of the sure event is 1. Jab hum apna experiment karenge to saaf zahir hai ke jo mukhtalif possible ordered pairs hai x1 y1 x1 y2 x3 y4 vagaira unme se kisi ek na ek ne to akar karna hi hai lihaza the sample space which consists of all those outcomes that is a sure event unme se koi ek bhi agar akar kar gaya to sample space akar kar gayi the sure event has the probability 1. In other words, the sum of all those probabilities has to be 1. Because of the discussion that I have just had with you, we can say that a joint probability distribution has the following important properties. Number 1, f of x i comma y j is greater than or equal to 0 for all possible ordered pairs x i y j. In other words, what we are saying is that none of these probabilities can be negative. The other property is that the sum of all such probabilities is 1. Students, aapne note kiya ke abhi jo expression aapne slide pe dekha Usme humne likha hua hai sigma sigma f of x i y j equal to 1. Pehle sigma ke saath subscript i attached hai aur dusre summation sign ke saath subscript j attached hai aur ye double summation is liye zaruri hai ke humari jo table hai that is a bivariate table. Jab hum add karenge to hum First, we can add over the columns and then we can add over the rows and that will give us the value 1. So, jab kabhi bhi aap bivariate situation ke saath deal karenge, you will be involving double summation or agar continuous situation hai, then the two summation signs will be replaced by double integration. Ye to table aapne abhi dekhi, this brings us to the concept of marginal probability distributions. The probabilities that occur in the margins of that table are called marginal probabilities and as you now see on the screen, the formal definition of marginal probabilities is the probability distribution of the random variable x denoted by g of x 
is equal to sigma f of x i y j and the summation sign has j equal to 1 to n. In other words, g of x i is equal to f of x i y 1 plus f of x i y 2 plus so on up to f of x i y n. Ab ye jo subscript i hai, this is itself a variable. So, if I put i equal to 1, I obtain g of x 1 is equal to f of x 1 y 1 plus f of x 1 y 2 plus so on up to f of x 1 y n. Is ka mafhoom kya hai? Students, humari jo bivariate table hai, aapko yaad hoga ki usme sabse pehli value x ki jo hai, that is x 1. Aur us row mein, uske against jo joint probabilities hai, agar aap unko add kare, to aapko aakhir mein jo total value milti hai, that is g of x 1. So, I would like to encourage you to study this table and the formula that I have just presented and you will realize that it is actually very simple. Agar aapne g of x i compute karna hai, yani x ki mukhtalif values ke liye corresponding probabilities, to aap over the rows add karte jaiye and you will obtain the required probabilities. Isi tara, if you want to find the probability distribution of the random variable y, you will do exactly the same procedure, but in the other direction. Aapko yaad hai ki us table mein y values are written on the top, y1, y2, y3 and so on. And if I want to find h of y1, that is the probability that my random variable y takes the value y1, what should I do? Aap uske against jo values column wise hain, unko add kar lije and what you get as the total, that is what you want. And as you now see on the slide, this can be written as h of yj is equal to sigma f of x i y j and the sigma sign now has with it i going from 1 to m. We will be applying all these concepts to an example in a short while, but before we do that students, why do we not also define conditional probability in this kind of a situation? As you now see on the screen, the conditional probability function for y given that x is equal to x i is f of y j given x i is the probability that y is equal to y j and x is equal to x i divided by the probability that x is equal to x i and this is equal to f of x i y j divided by g of x i. In a similar way, we can define the conditional probability of x given y equal to y j. The next concept is that of independence and as before, we can say that x and y are statistically independent if f of x y is equal to g of x into h of y. Abhi jo last expression mene aapke saath share kiya, usme mene kaha ki f of x y should be equal to g of x into h of y. Of course, agar hum isko elaborate karke kahen, to hum kahenge ki f of x i y j should be equal to g of x i into h of y j for all values of i and all values of j. Lekin short karke, we simply say that f of x y should be equal to g of x into h of y. All right, let us now apply all these uh, points to an example. 
An urn contains three black, two red and three green balls and two balls are selected at random from this urn. If x represents the number of black balls and y represents the number of red balls out of the two that we select, then find number 1, the joint probability function f of x, y, number 2, the probability that x plus y is less than or equal to 1, number 3, the marginal probability distribution g of x and h of y, number 4, the conditional probability distribution f of x given 1. Number 5, the probability that x is equal to 0 given that y is equal to 1. And finally, we are interested in determining whether or not x and y are statistically independent. Aapne dekha ke is problem mein to bohat sare questions hain jin ko hum address karna chahte hain. Lekin sab se pehle ye dekhte hain ke ye jo distribution hai, how will we construct this bivariate table? Students, we will have to do it one by one and first of all, let us consider the case when x is equal to 0 and y is also equal to 0. Is liye ke aap agree karenge ke this is the first possibility ke jab hum us bag mein se do ball uthayen, so number of red balls bhi zero ho aur number of black balls bhi zero hi ho. Yani, wo dono balls jo hum uthayen, they are green balls. Is liye ke urn ke andar, red or black ke ilawa, sabz rang ke balls bhi to hain. Now, in order to have this particular scenario, we realize once again that we have to apply the rule of combinations and also we apply the classical definition of probability. So, to have the denominator of the classical definition, the total number of ways in which I can draw two balls out of 8, what will I compute? Obviously, 8C2. And to have the numerator, the number of ways in which I can draw two green balls out of this bag, and no red ball and no black ball so that x is 0 and y is 0. Students, how many ways of doing that? As you now see on the slide, this is equal to 3c0 into 2c0 into 3c2. Aapko yaad hoga ke hum rule of combinations ke saath saath rule of multiplication bhi apply karte hain is type ki situation mein. Computing these values, our answer is 3 as far as the numerator is concerned and as far as the denominator is concerned, 8C2 is equal to 28. Therefore, the probability that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 is equal to 3 by 28. Students, Isi tarah se, we will compute all the other probabilities. And how many probabilities do we have to compute in all? Aap realize karenge ke agar hum do ball draw kar rahe hain, to x variable 0 se 2 tak ja sakta hai. We can have no black ball or one black ball or two black balls. Or y variable jo hai, that can also go from 0 to 2. We may have no red ball, one red ball or both red balls. So, as you now see on the screen, we have a bivariate table in which there are 9 cells and it is interesting to note that 3 of the probabilities are 0. Students, I will discuss with you this problem in further detail in the next lecture, but in the meantime, I would like to advise you to compute all the probabilities 
of this table doing your own calculations and in particular think about the three probabilities that are equal to zero. Aapko yaad hai na? The probability of an impossible event is zero. So just think about it. Best of luck and until next time, Allah Hafiz.